Greetings to all our viewers. My name is Obonye Mkhabi and welcome to Enlightenment Hub. Enlightenment Hub. May you please have Kaho introduce yourself. Quickly, then we'll start. My name is uh, Franz Kahongom. I'm a University of Botswana student studying sports science. Okay, Mbikani. Um, my name is Mbikani Philemon, and uh, I'm doing psychology and economics. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Pearl Rapeja Pilusisite. I'm a second year student at the University of Botswana studying psychology and economics. Okay, thank you. So as I was saying, Botswana follows a 12 year school program. We start from standard one up to form five, which is the basic education, and then it goes over to the tertiary institutions, which are uh, which, which are multiple across the country where students go on after they complete their form five. So in this education system, at form three, there are some students who are left behind because they do not perform well. And then at form five, there are some students as well who do not go on to teach education. So here today, we'll be talking about the school system and asking, is it overrated or not? And that's what we'll be discussing today or debating on. So as good as it sounds, the education system, which is free in Botswana, offers opportunities to all people, all citizens of the country, to have the equal opportunity to have a future if they want, which most people believe that after schooling, you will have a brighter future than if you were illiterate. So the question is, how much money is Botswana spending on the basic education and the tertiary education? which we are having, is it benefiting us or is money being wasted to resources being used? Or is it or is too much being spent in these uh, institutions? So the big question is, our school system beneficial or not? So uh, the number of people who are going to tertiary institutions yearly is between 30,000 and 60,000 or more. Um, in the past years, 2018, a record number of about 56,000 students were entering for tertiary institutions. So each speaker will have eight minutes to speak, and then two minutes after they speak for others to comment on what they say, and it will go on like that. May we please start with Kaho? I'm searching. Um, everybody under the influence of my voice, I would like to greet you all this afternoon. I am Francis Ngoma, and uh, I am affirming to the topic that's been brought to the beautiful house here, which reason this, is school overrated? But firstly, before I can go on with my agenda, allow me to drive you through uh, what I'm going to be doing and in what order. I am duty bound to break down the motion in simplicity. Also, I'm duty bound to recap the motion itself, to recap the education system of Botswana, to lay down my case. This is to now come into why I am affirming to the topic. And also, I'll be proposing to the House my policy agenda on what has to be done to improve the education system in Botswana. So ladies and gentlemen, the motion you hear is, is school overrated? When you talk about school being overrated, it, it simply means that is school being given a high opinion than it deserves? Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I propose and I affirm. I say, yes, school is overrated and it has killed the potentials of a lot of people in the world today, ladies and gentlemen. But before I can go into my case, or before I can hammer hard on the topic itself, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to move on into um, recapping the background information of Botswana's education system. 
But this education system literacy gentlemen is bookish. It is like a third story concept. It is uncivilized and it is terrible waste of time. When you talk about it being a, a theory concept, ladies and gentlemen, it is where the students are just being deposited with knowledge of which in most cases they cannot turn it into creativity ladies and gentlemen. Not, not to forget, like ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are living in the 21st century life, ladies and gentlemen, whereby we are talking about innovations, we're talking about technologies, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about practicality in most of the aspects right now, ladies and gentlemen. For example, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are facing a pandemic, but because of our education system, we are failing. To, uh, to adapt to the situation, to be able to produce our own vaccines, ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, we are failing also, ladies and gentlemen, to help our better laboratories, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of letting students wonder and question about this universe, ladies and gentlemen, the system feeds them ready made answers, kills all their wonders and their original questions, ladies and gentlemen. They end up vomiting the same. Uh, information and gentlemen they get from the teachers they get from the lecturers ladies and gentlemen and then they become the doctors they become the engineers creating a lifeless uh, society ladies and gentlemen an automated nation ladies and gentlemen is that a success of the education system ladies and gentlemen no our education system has failed ladies and gentlemen and it is continued to fail it is it is an illusion ladies and gentlemen our education system, in other ways, we can say that it is, a, it, it, it is, a, is a rapist. It is not easy to become a virgin once again, ladies and gentlemen, after that. But in our school system is flawed. It doesn't teach children necessary life skills. School teaches students things that are not related to their future, ladies and gentlemen. It does not prepare them for their career of choice, ladies and gentlemen. We will, a student will be doing nine subjects in senior school, ladies and gentlemen. Out of all these nine subjects, ladies and gentlemen, that they are doing, none of them are what they want in life, ladies and gentlemen. Is that what we call the success of a, a, school, a school system or a, an education system, ladies and gentlemen? No, that is why we are now saying that school is overrated. Now, here, ladies and gentlemen, now getting into my case of the day, there's a huge difference, firstly, that we need to understand here. There's a huge difference between education and school. School is merely a formal system that doesn't actually uh, um, offer everything that education entails. School only exposes students to certain um, select views and ideas and fail to provide the entire picture of all perspectives that are out there, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about the life that we are going to experience after we have completed the 12 years study, ladies and gentlemen, or the, rather, we'll say the 16 years of studying, ladies and gentlemen, when we include tertiary education inside, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to be able to adapt to the situations we are facing out there? Are we going to be in, you know, innovative, creative, ladies and gentlemen, looking at the school system that is here, ladies and gentlemen, in Botswana, ladies and gentlemen, as my parameter? No, ladies and gentlemen, we are just overrating. We're just giving a high opinion of our school system in Botswana, ladies and gentlemen. Schooling generally focuses on, on, on uh, getting as many hours as possible into the school day, ladies and gentlemen. What matters to, uh, to the students is going to school, making sure that we attend from period one up to period eight, ladies and gentlemen, and getting into the afternoon studies and then going. There's only one matters, ladies and gentlemen, in the school system, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but if we have that mindset as students, are we not exaggerating that school is important? School, is, uh, school provides success, ladies and gentlemen? This is the question that I'm posing to the house. One other aspect of school that makes it to be given high opinion, it does not deserve. It is tests and examinations, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, they stress our students for not good for, for, for no good reason. And it defeats the purpose of learning, ladies and gentlemen, and really enjoying the process. It takes away, ladies and gentlemen, the genuine pleasure of learning. These examinations, these tests, ladies and gentlemen, it brings in unnecessary panics, unnecessary pressure, ladies and gentlemen. One thing that we are also looking as to why we are seeing that school is given a high opinion than it deserves, ladies and gentlemen. Schools are overrated, ladies and gentlemen, because they measure success on such structured and rigid methods. Failing 
based on grades and exams is a false belief. That is what is practically being used in Botswana, in our education system, in the school system, ladies and gentlemen. You are graded of, on, on how you perform, on how, on how many A's you have, or, or how many E's you have, ladies and gentlemen. That is dangerous for students' self-esteem which can cause them to believe that they are unworthy, hence bearing their potential to talents six feet down, ladies and gentlemen. We're just exaggerating. We're just over giving these school system, ladies and gentlemen, powers, or we're just over praising the school system and the education system of Botswana, ladies and gentlemen. One thing about school is that it rewards getting answers correct instead of learning from mistakes, ladies and gentlemen, which is totally different from life in the real world, ladies and gentlemen, whether one says over and over again. If one is out to do amazing things, this is even more true, ladies and gentlemen. We are all graded on how correct answers we have, ladies and how many correct answers, pardon, how many correct answers we have, ladies and gentlemen. This is our education system. Our education system in the school system of Botswana, ladies and gentlemen, a teacher coming in front of the students, ladies and gentlemen, giving out the knowledge that they know, ladies and gentlemen, thinking that uh, they know our futures, ladies and gentlemen. That is totally wrong. That is totally an illusion, ladies and gentlemen. That is why we are saying, that is why I am saying that school is overrated, ladies and gentlemen. What is the purpose or what is the use of a lecturer coming into class to deposit the knowledge that they he knows into our minds this statement instead of coming up with the practicality ladies and gentlemen or rather instead of coming up with the creativity ladies and gentlemen the new ways of teaching that are aligned to the 21st century life ladies and gentlemen right now ladies and gentlemen we are taught concepts that were taught uh, as far as in 1990s pardon me ladies and gentlemen but we are in 2021 ladies and gentlemen we are in 2021 being taught something that was taught my mother, something that was taught my uncle out there, ladies and gentlemen. Is that how we are aligned, ladies and gentlemen? Is that how we are praising schools, ladies and gentlemen? No, we need change. That is now we are now um, driving you to what I advocate for or to what I advocate to be done, ladies and gentlemen, uh, into this education system or this school system of which I will cover, ladies and gentlemen. One, one thing again, ladies and gentlemen, is that students are not taught to their learning styles, ladies and gentlemen. If a student, for example, is a kind of testist, ladies and gentlemen, they need to do the practicality, right, ladies and gentlemen? They need to do the practicality, not to sit passively listening to the lecturers, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, totally what our school yes, system is. That is totally our, what our school system is doing, ladies and gentlemen. Now, coming to what I advocate to be done into our education system, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, we need to demolish the current education policy, ladies and gentlemen. And then we have to align to the 21st century resolutions, apply more practical aspects than um, spoon feeding people. The government should teach its people how to fish rather than giving its people fish, ladies and gentlemen. I stand for a different education, a different education uh, where students will not learn just the books, ladies and gentlemen. Where students will also be given an opportunity to perform their talent, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to have a broad, broad mind, mindset, ladies and gentlemen. So in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, I will just say, we are talking about same tools, same topics, same studies for everyone from generation to generation. Nothing is changed, ladies and gentlemen. Schools are overrated. The world changes, resolutions, technology, online trading like Forex and cryptocurrency. And but the school and its system remain the same. That is so bad. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not rest my case in peace. Still saying, I propose to the topic that says is school overrated. Yes, it is overrated. Thank you. Thank you, Caro. That was a great way to start our debate. So I would like to give two minutes to the rest of the participants. If there's any who wants to comment on what he has just stated, you may go on and start speaking. Okay, it seems like there will be no one will be commenting for now. You may still comment later. So in a rep, what Kapo was just saying is that uh, we, are not, we are failing in our system in Botswana to recognize the difference between school and education. And we are also lacking creativity in our school system. And then he talked about the school time where students spend the whole day at school and go on into study time. Um, 
my view on that concept is that he is right. And I feel that the, the number of hours that um, our students spend, especially in the basic education from form five below, the number of hours they spend in school is too much and it's blocking them from pursuing other things. I believe that students should have less hours at school and they should get time after school to participate in many events like athletics, sports, learn how to play musical instruments, learn how to dance and many other things which can benefit them. So he also talked about examinations and tests. I'm not sure if I got him properly, but he said that they were unnecessary, but I'm not sure if I would agree to that because I feel like the examinations and tests are the ones which gauge, um, the, the, which gauge on how far a student, has, a student has gone in understanding and managing to apply the concepts that have been taught. And then he also talked about the school being a killer to people's potential, which I agree with because it seems like for our students today, if you fail at school, if you're a good soccer player and you fail at school, it's all hope lost for you and there's no way you can go. If you are a good athlete and you fail at school, it's all hope lost for you and I believe that should change. Um, now let's go on to the next speaker. Let's have Pearl. Um, we are here today discussing the motion that read is school overrated. I'll like to start by explaining the term school and the term overrated. The term school means a cohort with an aim of acquiring knowledge and overrated means when something is given more value than they actually deserve. Um, with the motion that reads, is school overrated? I'd like to rebut and say, no, school is not overrated. I'd like to support my view with the following points. Um, school is the foundation of morality. Through schools, we've learned how to behave and differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. We've learned from a very young age how to behave in different places through schools, which sometimes we fail to acquire in our own homes. With learning morality from an early age, societal misconduct and crimes are also kept. Mind you, when in two years back, if I'm not mistaken, there was this time when the president declared the cut of points from the junior schools to the senior schools be decreased. That was to make sure that all, almost all, it can be all, but almost all the students who fail, who managed to pass their form three and those who didn't actually pass can manage to pass to their form four. That was done only to have these societal, societal misconduct and crimes. Um, my second point, students do not only follow the school curriculum, there's what we call extracurriculum activities, which plays a major role in our lives. For example, some of us are sitting here today because of the passion we, we had for debate. Some are great athletes, poets, artists, and all this started at school. We were, we were nurtured in these extracurriculum activities where we, we, when we were still schooling. Some even didn't know they had these talents and passion, but through school, those talents were unleashed. Hence, I can say school play a major role in helping people realize and put to use their passion and talent. Um, living in a less developed country with less liter low literary level, literacy levels and employment, employment rates, uh, are those points that to, will make one think that school is, is a waste of time or it's, it's work, like I had the first speaker saying, but sometimes the problem is not the, it's not the, the school, it's our economy. For example, we study for about 17 years, including the tertiary education. Afterwards, you don't get a job. 
The problem here is the slowly developing economy that is unable to produce more employment for the literate citizens. Regarding the Botswana school curriculum, which includes teaching and being taught a maximum of seven subjects, even if one do not like them, we can say that that's why our education or school system is failing us. People stand, spend most of their time studying materials that will not even be useful for, for their future in some such as specialization in developed countries such as Japan and China. Such, with such methods, it will be much effective to learn since we will all be doing what we personally like. So what I'm saying here is that uh, the, the, the interest of students should be put first and then them being forced to do what they don't like. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pearl. Um, if there is anyone who'd like to comment on what she has just laid down, may you please start? We have Kahoy in the Ghani. Does any one of you want to comment on what she has said? Okay, Kaho. Please go on. Yes, um, sir. Um, firstly, I picked uh, one point that she was, she was saying here. She said that the um, school is a foundation of morality, whereby we are taught to behave well. But uh, my question is that, can't we learn how to be morally upright from home? Because that is the way everything begins. For example, there is a saying that says, charity begins at home. Can't we learn all these moral values from home instead of being, is, before we can even learn them at school. That is one question I pose to him. And also I heard him say that um, school is where students' talents are being nurtured. I want to emphasize that it is not only about school to help uh, nature the talents of individuals. It is the inner need, the desire of such individuals to participate into the, uh, the, 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 the activities that are related to their talents. For, for example, if a, if, if, if a student loves soccer, there are Sunday soccer out there, not necessarily being in school. They participate there, and they, that, that's the way they can be picked by those experts from the, these uh, known teams. Are we now also putting uh, schools in that, in, in, in that aspect? That is the second question that I will be posing to her. Thank you. Okay, Ndikani, is there anything you'd like to say? Seems not. Pearl? No. Okay, please go on. Um, with the second question, I would like to ask Gao this question. Do you think those people who coach children at school aren't aspect, are experts? I doubt. I doubt that just a mere, mere person can be called and put in the playground to teach children how to play soccer. Um, let me give an example. I think, I think with the recently ended, the recently ended, um, to, it wasn't Tokyo or Kenya. The, the the athletes which were athletics which which were held in Kenya. Some of those children, they started there with with athletics in in junior schools and some in primary schools. The likes of Lizzie, he started at school, and trust me, you can you can even see for yourself where he is by now. And the, the, the first question was, can we learn charity at home? The reason why I explained the term school, I wanted to show you that that's where we, we, that's where we have a chance to learn something which is common. That's why 
there is what you call the school uniforms. And it is important to learn like the same, the same ethics. Okay, Kaho, I hope you heard. Um, my take on your questions, Kaho, would be that on the first one of morality, the main challenge is that most children are facing challenges at home. Some students have challenges at home where parents are not even trying to nurture them, where they're not being cared for properly and they're not being taught the right traits of behaving. That is why we see that in the same schools that the children are brought to, there are many ill behaviors that develop there because they're being brought by some students who fail to learn the, the morality from home. So school brings them up together and teaches them as a whole, try to bring them into place for those who fail to be taught at school. So it caters for everyone. On the second round of nature and talent, I believe that tell what she just stated that um, in sports and other activities that are taking place. She did talk about athletics and extracurricular activities like debate where students discover their talents from school. And then she also stated that school is not a problem, but our economy, which fails to cater for specialization because of the poor economy. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to say before we go to Ndugani Kaho. Yes, yes, sir. Please go on. Going back again to the going back again to the point of morality. Firstly, we need to understand that you can take a horse to the river, but you cannot force it to drink water. Um, when you when we say that students at school will be taught morality if uh, they if the parents have failed at home or they they lack that structure to give them morality, but it, it doesn't guarantee the fact that uh, they are going to change. That is what I wanted to. To, 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 uh, to clarify the and then going back again to the case of uh, the case here being a school, uh, saying that school has uh, ability to nature talents. We are not against that fact that school nature talents, but what we are saying is that we are, we are exaggerating it. We are over praising schools to be only the place where talents are natured. We also have other places where talents are also natured, not only schools. We are overrating schools here. That is, that, that is not right. Now my question is, 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 is now here is, is that are we not overpraising or are we not overrating schools here when we talk about talents? Okay, good Carol. Ndigani, may I please go on to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, school is great, but overrated. Many lose their genus while trying to please the grades. Ladies and gentlemen, protocol is highly observed. My name is Simbiyani Solomon, and I'll be presenting my views on the statement which reads, um, school is overrated. And I'm in support of this motion, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, before I can move on on why I support this statement, let me now go through to explaining the Botswana's education system, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that Botswana's education system is divided into four levels, which include the elementary, the junior high school, the senior high school, and the tertiary education, ladies and gentlemen, of which one is expected to do well academically in order to go through these levels, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, like I say, ladies and gentlemen, this School is overrated, ladies and gentlemen. Why do I say so? Because I believe that, ladies and gentlemen, it school kills the potential of many students, ladies and gentlemen. With the grading system of our country here, ladies and gentlemen, it only favors the students, ladies and gentlemen, who are only good at who are, it only favors the students, ladies and gentlemen, who are good at academically, ladies and gentlemen, and and leaves out those who cannot do well, ladies and gentlemen. Also, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't, school only, it, it gives only those students, ladies and gentlemen, who are, have, who can, it only gives students who are good at academics and make them have the chance to showcase their skills and talents and become one of the outstanding students. But what about those students, ladies and gentlemen, who are doing badly, ladies and gentlemen, but have different talents and skills in other aspects, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we already know that there are those universities and schools who offer special classes ladies and gentlemen, for those students, ladies and gentlemen. but this is not enough, ladies and gentlemen. And why do I say that, ladies and gentlemen? Because we all know that we as humans are naturally born with our talents and the ability to learn new and different skills, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, the ability to think and to think intellectually intelligently is not about think, it's not about the only thing we it's not about the only thing we can do, ladies and gentlemen. Why do I say so? Listen, because everyone has their own talent, ladies and gentlemen, that is waiting between, with, that is within them, ladies and gentlemen, which needs to be enhanced, ladies and gentlemen, and practiced inside of them, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I say I believe that we should stop comparing someone's capability, ladies and gentlemen, through comparing them with other people and also by setting standards for them, ladies and gentlemen. Like our education system of Bozana has many ladies and gentlemen, which is expecting students to meet the certain requirements in order to go to another level of education. I was saying that given the fact that students vary in level of intelligence and knowledge, it is unfair to those students who have less knowledge and intelligence, ladies and gentlemen. Why do I say so? Because it's going to bring the bad effects on them, ladies and gentlemen. Which effects am I talking about, ladies and gentlemen? It's going to affect their mental health, emotional health, social health, intellectual health, and the physical health, ladies and gentlemen. So that's why I prefer that students, ladies and gentlemen, have to have a fair life as a student. And given the attention to those skills and talent, the, those grace ladies and gentlemen are not important in changing anything because the mindset we should always be on top is already planted is ever, in everyone's mind, ladies and gentlemen. So I suggest that this system that I suggest that by having a system that needs to always follow will be a blockage to the value of the advice of to the given to given them, ladies and gentlemen. Given to them, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for that. Ladies and gentlemen, also the main, the main point is that, ladies and gentlemen, it's upon an individual, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that he or she has a successful life, so a successful life. Hence, school is not a guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, that one will live a successful life, ladies and gentlemen. Why do I say so? Hunger is the key and uh, desire is the main thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is the depth of our hunger to succeed that distinguishes us from the pack and help us to get There seems to be a problem again with your sound. Um, it is the depth of our hunger to succeed that distinguishes us from the pack and helps us to go to the point we want in life, ladies and gentlemen. School is not only the reason, it's not only the guarantee that one will live a successful life. Um, and remember that hunger cannot be underestimated, ladies and gentlemen. Why do I say so, ladies and gentlemen? It is because if you have hunger, passion and desire to make most of your life, there is nothing able to withstand that ferocity, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I say, and that's why there are many individuals, ladies and gentlemen, in Botswana and the country and the world as a whole, ladies and gentlemen, who are successful with no formal education, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I say that it is very overrated because the most important thing is constant and never ending, ladies and and never ending improvement and embellishment, ladies and gentlemen. With all that I say, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that school is overrated, ladies and gentlemen. It does not necessarily mean that when you are in school, ladies and gentlemen, you have that priority of being successful, ladies and gentlemen. It's upon the individual intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, of how do you of how you want your life to be, ladies and gentlemen. With all this, I'll like to rest my case. Okay. Um, is there anyone who'd like to comment on what Bigania said?
Ok, très bien. Um, regarding the issue that the school doesn't include school at excludes those kids which are not good in academics i'd like to ask him this question do you know of excellent schools the likes of good hope senior those schools are created to cater for those students who are doing good in sport it's not like the government is sitting there doing nothing at all if a developing country if I do, for a developing country for, for, for a developing country like Botswana, we can say that's an effort. And he also said that school is not a guarantee for excellence. Yes, yeah, school is not a guarantee for excellence, but school creates life-changing opportunities. Some people who are car car <laughs> categorized as rich are products of school. Some of them got vocational trainings, which led them be having to open their own businesses. And some got scholarships to pursue their dream careers after excelling in schools. Thank you. Thank you, Pearl. And you guys, anything? Uh, yes, I'm here. <coughs> yes, I was saying, is there anything you'd like to comment? Okay, uh, go on, you guys. Yes, on the issues as on the issue that she said, um, there are schools whereby those students who are left to her go to. Of course, I mentioned that I said that there are those there are I oh, there are those students, those students who are left behind, there are universities or schools, of course they can go and do so that time. But this is not enough, ladies and gentlemen. Example of those students who are schooling at good hope, ladies and gentlemen. So they should be able to go to Tesar level level. Is that level if they face ladies and gentlemen. No, I believe that ladies and gentlemen, we should stop determining, we stop determining someone's capabilities, ladies and gentlemen, by comparing them. Uh, that's my thank you. Uh, Smosh. Uh, good day. I hope everybody is doing good. Um, I hear Sir over there telling us that um, school is, is, is somewhat limiting people, but as, as Ma'am had already said, what about the fact that almost each and everybody who's, who's in Botswana right now has had a chance to go to school and then had a chance to work because of the information or the things that they have been being empowered with due to school? What about those things? Does he account for the fact that as much as we are a developing country, we need school to produce more and more workers. Can he please um, elaborate more on that issue? Okay, Mbiga, you would like to say something or should I go on and say something myself? Go on and say something. Okay, so as I was listening to Mbiga speak, I heard him talk of the fact that the system is being concentrated, meaning that the system is producing the same products um, every year, and those products are becoming too much for the market, meaning that the school is producing people. Yes, they are educated. Yes, they have skills. But then those people have degrees and they're sitting at home. They're failing to get employment because the school system is, has not evolved. It's still using the old system that's producing the same type of people who are lining up and they're increasing in number. Therefore, the market is being too little for them to enter. And then he also, okay, as he, he talked about school not being a guarantee for success, which is true. Um, I wanted to incorporate that point with this first, this first point that school favors the academically gifted. I wanted to also say that those who are academically gifted are somehow being disadvantaged by, by school at this moment because they are lacking motivation. 
imagine you're academically gifted, you know you want to do a degree in something, but you have two siblings at home. One of your siblings is a DJ, he's been successful, and your other sibling has a degree, but they cannot get employment. Where is your motivation then? You lose motivation in school, you lose your faith in school, and therefore the school system becomes a failure. Um, I hope I've answered this much by the fact that uh, the system is being concentrated for the same skills. Um, I'd like to give you your time now, Smosh, to speak. Uh, good day again. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry for budging in late. Uh, I didn't see the, the, the notifications coming in. But anyways, uh, God is good and God. So, um, is school overrated? Uh, is school overrated? Uh, am I audible enough? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yeah. So as school uh, overrated, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm facing a lot of issues as to how we go on to categorize school, how we go on to understand what it is that we mean when we say school. Now, everybody's... Is, is quick to jump on to issues of is, is, is school the only thing and I've chosen to say school is not overrated as I'm looking at this with, with the issue okay fine of course school is the key to success it's not the only key to success but have we ever sat down and reintrospected as to how the people who we say are successful how many how many people are there that we say are successful but haven't gone through the course of school or have neglected the whole idea of sitting down and saying i'm going to school now i want us to respect and and and, and uh, appreciate the fact that yes people are out there and people are making it in life due to uh, stuff which is not merely incorporated with school but i would like us to quickly uh, go and scan at developed countries what developed countries are doing right now developed countries like um let's take england for example we have england which uh hosts uh, a tournament uh, the english premier league almost each and every year and they're making lots and lots and lots of money and then they went on to say to sit down and say okay fine this is something that could bring in money in our country so what do we do we sit down and we teach our kids how to play football that is the process where we say we're putting them through school right now everybody's focused on the system that we're using in Botswana so I would choose to say school is not so overrated but rather what is overrated is the system that our country is using is the system that we're, we're going to take a child and put them through school and say okay fine you're going to go to school for like 12 years and then you're going to be studying sciences you're going to be studying this what if we sat down and we taught our kids to say okay fine you th this is what you could be good at and this is what you could be good at what is it that you actually really do want and then create a system in which uh it can actually accommodate for that person now i want us to understand and appreciate what school is. School is not only a mere factor of saying somebody is actually successful in life. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go on. Okay. Um, school doesn't actually, uh, school is not something that we sit down and say it's only meant to bring somebody uh, down and say, okay, fine. Uh, you're going to be successful in life after going to school. No, let us appreciate the idea of interacting and communicating with people. During school, we sit down and experience different kinds of people, from the teachers to the students that we go to school with. And have we ever really sat down and say, this is my idea of how I want to incorporate myself with other people? And where did I learn that? Or how did I acquire that skill to say, I can be able to listen and I can be able to speak out when it's actually the time to actually do so. It's at school where you actually get to experience that somebody can be moody at some point and then they can be happy at another point. Where did we actually learn that? We have to appreciate the power that school holds to say, okay, fine, maybe, just maybe the system is failing us. 
but the power of school and the importance of school that it holds in our lives it helps create and build the particular young person or the particular child who's going through who's actually going through the process of growing up school is actually a, a, an aid in the growing up of a, of, of, of a child so we i choose not to accept the fact that school is overrated looking at those kind of issues to say school helps you grow up school helps you become one person who can be able to interact and go to the society and say this is what i'm set out to do this is what i want to do or as much as you can go and sit down and say this is abc not just uh, the, the simplicity of it to say you can actually read you can actually speak english what about that idea that at least even if you do not make it to the end part of the school or of 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 uh, of that uh, point where we say you are successful even if you do not arrive to that uh, position we cannot actually at the end of the day host you and say you you are not successful those people sat down and learned how to read and then they implied or applied that particular skill that skill that we so think that is little they applied it to their talent they applied it to their uh, sector and they grew with it they were able to appreciate that i can read because i want to school so i want each and everybody who saying school is overrated to look at at least those kind of things that at least you gain a skill to be able to interact with people you gain a skill to be able to be in an, an environment with others you gain a skill to be able to read. school might not be able, supporting um other factors like talent other factors like uh, somebody who wants to do something which is not of um which cannot be taught but at the end of the day when you actually have to interact with people you actually have to learn and where do you get those skills where do you actually learn you learn at school and I, i think that's all i have to say with that to say school provides us with different kinds of skills and therefore we ought to appreciate it we ought to accept that school creates something even if the system does not take you to a point of success at least at the end of the day you were able to gain a particular idea to grow a particular idea to create a perfect or a better lifestyle for yourself you were able to read you were able to say uh, i know what i want you were able to speak english you were able to say i know how to listen and i know when to speak only because you went to school thank you uh, thank you so much um, as you were saying you just think that school increases your chances of being successful in life not just not that it guaranteed but the chances are increased we spoke about the system not being the, the school not being the issue but the system is the one that's failing us so my take on that is basically that the people in positions of power the people who have been in positions of power for the past years up to now we have failed to actually change our system and make it adapt to uh, the new times are the ones who have failed us in their system and not, and school is not the failure and also the skills that we get from school are core and are needed by everyone so i'd like to give um, all participants the chance to um comment on what smosh has stated Yes, Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ceremony. Um firstly, oh, sorry. We are not against the fact that school is the basic foundation of learning. As he was saying, He mentioned that we learn the ABCs, we learn how to read and write. We are not against that. But what we are here saying, or what, or what my case is built on, my foundation of case here is that we are praising the school. The praise that the school is getting is so exaggerated. It is beyond the limits. We appreciate the fact that we learn how to read and write at schools. But some of the things that are currently uh, being uh, given credit about school, they are just illusion, ladies and gentlemen. For example, when we are saying, uh, when we are talking about the nation of talent, if I can uh, uh, go back, 
to the point that we were talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't, we don't only learn talent in schools. We don't only learn morality in schools. We also come with those from different institutions in the society. Remember, we have different institutions in the society. We have the church. We have the family. We have the quota. We learn these things a different aspect. If one is a singer and that's their talent, the school is not the only place where they can learn that. A church, one can be a priest and a worshiper. If one is a soccer player, they can also do that at the playground in the society or in the village or in the town, wherever they are. For example, as I mentioned, we have Sunday soccer. We have um, some games that uh, the society miss day and play, ladies and gentlemen. That is why we are saying that we are just giving the school that praise that is just beyond the limit. We are exaggerating it. We are overreaching schools as they stand at the moment. The school system here um, in our country, ladies and gentlemen, does not deserve the praise that we are giving it, ladies and gentlemen, when now we are assimilating it to the education system. Also, he mentioned that school uh, increases the chances of success, though it is not guaranteed. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, who in this era uh, still stands with that theory that uh, success only begins uh, with, uh, with schools? People are out there are successful. As I mentioned, we have online trading nowadays. Forex, for example, we have cryptocurrency. Do they need to go to school to study those forex and things, ladies and gentlemen? No, some people start their forex trading at home with their own they get from the internet, ladies and gentlemen. But still, they become successful. They become the the the, the high grandeur business uh, men, businessmen or business women in the society though, that we know, ladies and gentlemen. But still we, have, we still have graduates out there, seated, nothing they are doing, nothing, absolutely nothing. They are seated out there, ladies and gentlemen, doing nothing. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because they wasted their 12 years or rather 16 years trying to decide what they want in life. That is cool for us. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Those are my two counterpoints. Thank you, Kapo. Is there anyone else who would like to say something? Uh, Bigani. Uh, okay, Joe, please go on. Um, commenting on what Garo said, I like to tell him that not all of us had the privilege to have functional families where we get to be taught about this morality then So in this case, school is the only foundation of that morality. Since we can get it at home, some of us don't even go to churches. But as for school, every child is entitled to go into school. Um, commenting on his comment on forex trading, I, I didn't hear the point quite well, but we are still going back to what Smosh said, basic skills. Can you trade that forex without basic skills? You need to access the internet. With that, you have to have that, you, you, have, to, you have to know how to read basic skills. You you can you you can prosper in, in this sense without interacting with other people. We still go back to basic skills. Yet school is not is not a guarantee for it's not school is not a guarantee, yes. But we have we we have to we have to understand that it's not like the government owes us jobs. We don't have to always be spoon fed. Thank you. Thank you, Pearl. Uh, Smosh, your hand is up. Please take the floor. Okay. Um. Thank you. Um. Yes. Uh. Madam Paul has has just put it out in in a nutshell when she talks about the fact that school provides us with the basic need, right? 
as, as, as much as you can go to church and learn a particular skill, but I'm pretty much sure, and I, I, I think almost everybody here can account for that idea that when you go to church, you learn only one particular skill. And when you go to, um, uh, to the quarter, you're going to learn one particular skill. But I want us to, 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 to take into, into account that there is assembly. I know almost everybody here who's went to Astrona Medium went to uh, assembly where they sat down, where, where they spent time, they prayed, and they actually um, 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 acknowledged the idea of church and the assembly, right? They were able to acknowledge the idea of being given information um, by, 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 by somebody else whilst they receive that kind of information. Therefore, we've covered the whole idea of, of what the Hota meetings. And then they go on to talk about the talent. No, 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 people. Let's, let us identify the idea that school encompasses almost everything. When you're at school, you're allowed to play football. You're allowed to play uh, a netball. You're allowed to play soccer. You're allowed to almost uh, engage in all of that. Right. And then there, there was the issue of, of, of forex trading, which Madam Pearl has, has actually covered too when, when, when she talks about the basic idea or the basic knowledge that one has. Right. When you go to, 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 to forex trading, a person who does forex has to know what a graph is. A person who does forex has to know that this is a candlestick. Where would, would they have learned that this is a candlestick or this is a graph or this is how I judge a graph or this is, uh, the, 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 I, I, I've heard that they, they even use uh, triangles and, 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 and rectangles and stuff like that. That is the basic knowledge that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give out to you people or at least me and Pearl are trying to give out to you guys to say that basic need, that simple basic need is what uh, people uh, need. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Smosh. Uh, uh, all your hands is up. Please take the floor. Okay. Um, first, I would like to start uh, with the point that was said, the government is not owing us jobs. Yes, the government is not owing us jobs, but it owes us the change of the school system, the change of the education system. Our education system is failing. Our education system, as I've said, ladies and gentlemen, it is bookish. We are deposited with knowledge we cannot turn into innovation or creativity. I will be studying here, I'll, I'll, I'll be studying law here. But once I finish here, I'm one person, um, uh, one, one of the first people who will be waking up at 6 a.m. selling sweets at the bus station, ladies and gentlemen. How is that aligned to my career of choice? Which means that we are choosing career of choices that we don't want because of the school system that we are taking, that we, we also uh, align to the education system. Ladies and gentlemen, one other thing that we should also take note here, ladies and gentlemen, when we are debating is school, overrated. We are trying to align it to the education system of Botswana, ladies and gentlemen. We are trying to see how is our, our school system and how are we going to relate it to the education system that we have in Botswana. The education system, we are talking about the 12 year uh, basic education, ladies and gentlemen, plus the four years that one is going to spend in the teacher education, if by chance they are going to do that, ladies and gentlemen. So how are we not going to apply the perspective of it being overrated? That is now where we, we, we are talking about what? We are talking about the theory concept. We are going to, to, to be talking about the, 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 the test, the examination, the, the, the waste of time, ladies and gentlemen, the hours spent in school. Now, that is now we're going to try to assimilate the two concepts, or rather the two aspects of the education system of Botswana and the school system of Botswana, ladies and gentlemen, to try and see how are we now going to put in the overrate um, uh, part, ladies and gentlemen. That is now why we are saying that school uh, is overrated in Botswana, looking at what? Looking at its education system, ladies and gentlemen. That is, we are aligning to it. Our education system is failing us. It is it is just a waste of time, ladies and gentlemen. It is old. It needs to be renewed, ladies and gentlemen. It needs to be repaired. It needs one to sit down and look onto it, ladies and gentlemen. That is why I was saying that I'm advocating for the demolition of the current education policy. 
of which we know that we are also including the schools, we're including the school as an institution where this education thing is taking place, ladies and gentlemen. Really, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is all I had. Uh, thank you very much, Carlo. That was some powerful points. Um, Bigani, you have your hand up. Please take the floor. Do you have anything? Um, upon the issue of um, that schools increases the chances of success, I would like to them to take into consideration the point that I came about, two points, two main points that I came about, which are um, I was saying, upon the issue of um, schools increases um, chances of success, we have to know that um, there are a lot of people here with degrees, diplomas, and certificates, more than the ethnometer, and they do things with their life, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I brought two main points here, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure to be the life that, ladies and gentlemen, school is not a guarantee that one will live a successful life, ladies and gentlemen, but it's upon the desire and the hunger that's within the individual to live the most of his life, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why we say, we cannot say school increases chances of success, ladies and gentlemen, but it's the hunger, the passion that is on the individual. Okay, thank you, Mbigani. If I heard you clearly, your point was that um, success can come to anybody who is willing and determined to work for it, whether they school or no school. I hope I understood you. I understood you well. Smosh, please take the floor. Okay, okay. Um, th there seems to be a huge confusion as to um, the success that we, we are so yearning for, right? As, as, as to how we understand what school is and what it actually is meant to do, right? Now, I want us to identify this one major factor of how everybody who we would say they're successful or how everybody who would say they have a paying job. Um, there's a difference between those two people, a person who has a paying job, who has a stable life, and a person who's successful. Now, school builds and tries by all means to build a citizen who has a job, right? Now, these people are trying to create a comparison with people like Mark Zuckerberg, who are actually the richest people in the world who went on to be successful. There is success, and then there is finding a stable job to say to be counted about the around the, the, the profits of the country or how much the, the country is, is is working. Right? We can. I want us to understand that even a person who didn't go to uh, a position of, of master's degree or, or stuff like that, that person can also make it. It can also become successful. But I'm pretty much sure that person cannot go to Morupule Koman and tell them that I'm an engineer and I want to work because they didn't get that kind of information, right? Now, why am I giving you out all of this information? It's to say, school is not a guarantee of success. No, it's not. But it provides us with um, citizens who are able to say. I can look for this job. I can look for that job. Though at the end of the day, not everybody's going to be able to find a job. There's going to be a higher percentage of people who are not working. But still, at the end of the day, those people have those papers and they can still present those, pe those papers and say, I want to have a job, right? Now, I'm going back to the issue which was mentioned, which everybody keeps uh, slandering around. Uh, the government does not owe you a job. And that one is a major factor. The government does not owe anyone a job. And the government, as much as I'm concerned, the government has created as many opportunities for each and every citizen in Botswana to create a job for themselves. Not to go out there and sit down and say, I want a job from somebody else. And that's why 
I'm, I'm starting to understand why Botswana will always remain a developing country because we are hell bent on trying to say, I didn't go to school and therefore I cannot create a job for myself and I cannot create a job for somebody else. It's because we are focusing on school and saying it's, it's school and, and, and because somebody has a master's degree, that means they'll be successful in life. That is success, but going and having uh, that particular job and, and saying I have a stable job doesn't necessarily mean that you're successful. That's all I'm trying to give you out, give out to you guys to say success and, and, and a paying job, those two things, they, they do not, as much as they connect, they're not the same thing. Thank you. Um, thank you, Smosh. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody who'd like to say anything else. If there is none, we'll be coming to the end of our session today. So if there's anything you'd like to say before we end this episode, please raise your hand. Yes, Mbigani, please go on and take the floor. Um, my opponent here to take into consideration, into consideration that I brought a point which says it talks about it kills schools kills the potential of many students with disability. Why do we say so disengagement? Because it gives them the same, the same exact same way of teaching, the same tools to every single person, which is going to make it impossible to get the same type of, uh, to, to, which is going to make it impossible to get the same type of uh, type of outcome. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Kapo, please take the floor. Okay. Okay. Um, firstly, there was the point of success and paying job, that there is a difference between the two. Well, he's right. There's a difference between success and uh, paying jobs. Yes, this food. He is right, which means that you could have spent all the 16 years in school thinking that you'll be successful or you'll get a paying job. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a difference. There's a difference between a success uh, full degree. You can get a... Uh, sorry for that. Um, I have, I have a question to ask to say who was just speaking. Um, whoever said that um, um you just kind of echo. Okay, we fixed it, sir. Hello. It's fixed. Yeah. Um, I, I was I was asking. Um, whoever said that? Uh, whoever told you to sit down and say, um, you go to school means that you're gonna, you're gonna be successful. Whoever told you that? And, and, and if I recall, during my school years, nobody ever told me or promised me, or actually the right word to you should be promised. Whoever promised you that you're gonna be successful by going to school. They just told you that you, you, you have to go to school and work. You have to go to school so that you can be uh, in some kind of a career to be able to pursue some kind of career. They did not tell you, or they did not promise you that you're gonna actually sit down and say, this is me being successful. They never told you that, as much as I'm concerned though. Uh, thank you, Smosh. Um, do you have any comment to that? Yes, let's see. He's the one. He's saying who, he's, he, he, he's saying, who said schools are making someone successful? Well, they are, they are saying education is the key to success. Where do you get education? You get it to school. But is that true? Is that true, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, I agree with the question. Who said school is making someone successful? It's not a guarantee that if you go to school, you'll be successful. Of course, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, we should stop overrating schools. Schools don't make us successful all the times. It's not only schools. Entrepreneurship is also the key to success nowadays. We are in the 21st century life, remember. We are staying in resolutions, change of plans, pandemics facing us. Are we still able to face them even, if after, even after going to school? That is the question I posed to Mr. Smosh. Uh, 
I didn't actually hear him perfectly, but I, I heard him talking about um, school. They say school as the key to success, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, yeah, I, I, I would like to, to highlight one thing. As much as I can tell you there is food, I didn't actually tell you that the food that is available is the only food that's available. I, 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 what I'm trying to say is, as much as we can say school is a key to success, it's not the only key to success. So I would like us to look at words and, and, and how words are being phrased. Let us, not to, let us not jump to say, as much as you can sit down and say, school is a key to success. It's not the only key to success. I didn't say that. They didn't say that, the people who told you that. They didn't say that. Uh, or at least that's how I'm trying to answer that, to say, yes, we told you school can, 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 can make you successful, but we didn't tell you that it's the only way to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we are now coming to the end, and from all our arguments here, I believe that the conclusion we can come up with is that we need to change our school system as Botswana. I believe that both those who are firm and those who oppose this um, school overrated motion um, can agree with me that we need a change in the system, the school system of Botswana. And actually, we need to change our system to produce more employers than employees because most of us here and most of everybody is going to school to be an employee, is going to school to be a doctor to be employed, going to school to be an accountant to be employed. But there's very few and very little people who are willing to go to school, learn, and actually be employers. Like Smosher had stated that uh, Botswana is pro providing lots of opportunities for young people to uh, start their businesses and actually employ others. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you who participated today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. a great time. And I believe that um, our mother here is somebody who will change us, which is somebody who will improve our lives, and somebody who will move our country forward. Thank you.